Hi, welcome to this video called What is MicroCates? Before I even start, let me just say that I am the engineering director for Canonical Kubernetes and MicroCates is one of the teams that I look after. It's also why I feel uniquely positioned to talk about this, having worked with K3s, VirtualBox with KubeSpray, Kind, and a bunch of other ways of consuming Kubernetes, either locally or in a cluster. I think that MicroCates is a bit of an unsung hero, and it does a lot of things in a very opinionated, but a very unique way. And so today, I want to take some time to look at that and really to dig in a couple layers deep uh, to talk about why I think that the way that MicroCates has been built is exciting and really cool. So. First things first, this isn't a marketing exercise. You folks know where to get microcates from and how to consume it, I'm sure. What you probably have also seen is the feature comparison in how it stacks up to other common solutions. As an engineer, when I'm going to run Kubernetes locally, I think about a few key things. Is it quick, easy, is it extensible? Can I do local load balancing, for example? And in this case, it's yes to all of those. However, there are some other things that you probably don't think about is that MicroCates also isn't just about running on your PC. It's also embeddable into IoT, into Raspberry Pis. And then even more so, it's got full HA. So you can actually run MicroCates in production and many people do, which is really cool. I would never say the same of kind, right? I'd never expect to have somebody running a kind cluster in production. In fact, I think they had an issue once where folks were looking at dynamically generating cert manager names to then run the ingress on production for kind, which is kind of crazy thinking about the way it's been designed. However, due to the way that MicroCates works, it's great in HA in production. So on my right screen here, I set up a fresh Ubuntu VM because I just wanted to show how easy it is, right? I didn't do the snap install as part of this video because it does take a few minutes and that's because it's pulling down dependencies and getting up and running. However, I now have MicroCates running. It's been installed. For those of you not familiar with what Snap is, Snapcraft is a great website where you can see uh, effectively Linux packages created primarily in the Ubuntu ecosystem. But what's really interesting for me is that Snap firstly is very opinionated. When you install Kind, that's it. That's your installation of Kubernetes. You have no particular upgrade path for that Kubernetes. However, when you install MicroCates, you get a direct correlation to Snap. Now, Snap is effectively a system where you have channels that can take incremental updates overnight. You can refresh your Snap and take an incremental update. Now, I drew a little diagram of how that relates to this. So you could effectively have something like stable, latest, edge tracks for your snap. You could be aligned to one of these tracks and you could pull that and it would update. Uh, and what's really interesting is that this is unique in the sense that, as I mentioned, when you install Kind or you install K3s, you need a new binary, right? You're actually stopping. In the K3s point of view, you would do an upgrade. You'd stop and upgrade that system. Uh, in the Kind uh, method, uh, methodology, tongue twister there, you would have to then uh, delete that Docker image and upgrade it to a new version with a new image. This is a way of getting incremental updates. Now, the differentiator as well is that this pulls from upstream when there are changes to Kubernetes. And that is really interesting how closely tied it is. The whole process of building the, K, the, uh, the MicroCase snap is completely in the open for you to see. And if we go to MicroCase, so Ubuntu, MicroCase, we can see the build scripts for how this works, build Kate's binaries, and lo and behold, it's grabbing Kubernetes upstream at a particular tag, so one of the upstream branches. So the release branch might be like 1.22, and then it will build the appropriate uh, MicroCate snap from that, which is really, really awesome because you have a direct correlation to upstream so that any fixes that get pushed into upstream also that get pushed into your MicroCate. So, so that's really, really compelling. Another thing as well I kind of glossed over that I want to deep dive into is the structure. So with K3s, it's a binary, as we know, and it installs some stuff inside the etc rancher folder. Uh, with kind, it's a Docker image, which expands into an ephemeral directory. How does snaps work? So the quick snap 101 is that snaps are isolated uh, to their sandbox. And if you remove classic on installation of microcates, if you're on an embedded device, that will set up strict confinement. So you, it's a, effectively a read-only file system uh, that you get to work with. So think of it this way. You've got uh, slash snap slash microcates. 
and that's your read-only file system. You then have var snap microcates, which is your um, read-write file system. And so with, with the classic confinement, I have the ability to do read-write uh, also in other areas of the machine where necessary, but it's really strictly confining everything that's possible. What's interesting is that stuff like container D is part of the microcates binary, uh, set of binaries rather, and it's isolated from other container Ds you might have running on your system. So let's go in and have a look at our microcate snap. So you can see that we've got the current revision because if I go to snap list, that number correlates to the microcates revision. So that revision could increment overnight if there was a push on this channel that's tracking 1.23 uh, Kubernetes and it would receive, restart and take that upgrade. What's also really interesting, if you look inside of common, this is a folder that would have things like your held open sockets. So here you can see the container D socket is being held open here. Also in the common folder would be your local path storage, uh, which is really, really simple and easy to access to understand. And of course, in current, which is a sim link into 2948, you have what's actually inside of microcates um, as a process. So let's go and do something else. Let's have a look at microcates as it is. So I've installed it. The next thing that I can do is like kube control, get pods, all namespaces, and there's nothing in my default. And so we can see this is what I get out of the box. I've got Calico running, but what about if I want some other stuff? So this is the next really, really powerful feature of microcates is that it has an add-on system and this add-on system is built into it. So the way that works is that there is a separate repository, microcates add-ons. In fact, I will spell it correctly and find it. Where you can contribute and add to the microcates ecosystem with different add-ons, right? So we've got a bunch of them here, Jaeger, Istio, etc. And to install an add-on is as simple as enable, let's say, um, what's a good one? Let's, put, let's pick traffic. There is such a use case for this, um, where you have folks that either want a low ops approach or want something consistent, right? Because it comes with an add-on at a version. Doing a Helm install, often folks will just be grabbing the latest, and this is really nice because you've got something that's pinned. You've also got the add-ons YAML that will determine the architecture as well. So we have this really great all-in-one ecosystem here where you've got a bunch of add-ons you can choose from that can effectively be turned on and off. And you can even write your own, which is really nice. Those add-ons um, effectively will run on-off code, so they can run installation code, they can make changes to get things ready. And in this particular example, if we go back to our get pods, what we'll see is that the traffic pod is just starting up. This takes a few seconds. I have to actually pull the images. And I also need to turn on DNS. Uh, that's something that I forgot to do earlier on. So I can turn these things on as well. Now, I've explained a little bit about what the snap system is, you know, the way of delivering the updates to microcates, which is effectively a folder inside of our snap. I haven't really talked about how microcates itself works or how it's built. So let's talk about that for a little bit whilst this is restarting with DNS and then it will allow traffic to be happy and to run out, roll out. Well, let's have a look. You have upstream Kubernetes like this. That upstream has a bunch of branches and those branches track to a release. So that might be like, and we can just go have a quick look at that. So you've got your branches there that track to a release. So I picked 1.22. What we do in microcates is we pull down this code and we add our own patch to that code called kubelite. What kubelite does, as you can see in all the open source code here in the build scripts, when you go to build the Kate's binaries, it builds this binary called kubelite. Now what is kubelite? Kubelite is effectively a way of starting up Kubernetes services all at once. And it starts those services up all at once and it keeps those isolated. And you're able to then have a really simple experience where the server is started up and you can see right here, it starts the controller manager, scheduler, and the API server. 
So let's take a little bit of time to illustrate how that actually looks. And this is exciting because you can start to see that if you're in control of this, you can start to turn components on and off. And that's where microcates is really interesting because unlike Kind, which is a cookie cutter, if you create 10 more of those images, they'll all be exactly the same configuration. We can start to do some more um, interesting and nascent behaviors when we start to create more of these. So part of the mechanics of microcates allows for clustering in HA mode, which means you don't need to have the API server turned on on every single node. So what you can do is you can join as a microcates client into a, a cluster that's already running. So to do this, what I want to do is to show you a project that I wrote that is going to locally leverage another really cool technology called LXC, so Linux containers. And LXC comes on Ubuntu. And what LXC allows you to do is to run containers locally. So what we're going to do is we're going to run a microcates local uh, control plane. I'm going to spawn up a bunch of containers locally and create an HA cluster within my local box. If you're interested in doing this yourself, it's on my GitHub uh, at Alex jo Alexis Jones uh, slash microcates uh, dot local cluster. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new window in my code. And we're going to clone that. Oops, my uh, semicolon didn't work there. Okay, now what we're going to do is jump into that. If you want to try this yourself, uh, you can just jump in and follow exactly the same commands. If you're running on Ubuntu, it should be as simple as launch. Um, I think that's all I needed. Okay, so one quick thing is that it's giving me an issue uh, around adding my user to the group. I'm just going to do that really quickly. And we'll try... Okay, let's try that again. So what's happening here is that I have a cloud init file that is inside my launch shell and it is starting up uh, microcates inside of an Ubuntu machine. But before it does that, it's reconfiguring the local microcates control plane I have running. It's turning on a bunch of uh, additional services such as RBAC, DNS, storage, Metal LB, and it is reconfiguring what I had already. And then it will start up my companion machines and join them to that cluster. And this is uh, made possible through an additional service that comes with microcates that is a listener that enables this join command to run. So when you do a microcates join that is effectively talking to the control plane server and this then reconfigures and allows you to join with your token. So you can see here Ubuntu 1 which is my LXC machine uh, should be getting created just now. I'm just going to switch my window so we go to my first tab which is here LXC list we should now see uh, that we have a machine being created in a moment. I think this is still uh, my existing Juju container, but in a moment this will come up and online. And this should give me a, a four node cluster with one control plane node. Now, what's really interesting as well is that Microcates, once you've set it up, and as we saw a, little, a few minutes ago, it's just like using any other Kubernetes because it's fully compliant to the API server objects that are available in upstream. It's not a facsimile. It's not a, um, a facade. It is using the upstream API server. And I'll give it a few minutes to finish spinning up those pods. 
and I will also give traffic a kip, kick to restart it so that it properly uh, joins in. So that's the high level architecture of how this works. Kubelite is the process that runs inside of the snap, which forms the backbone of microcates. We also have the listener, which is a large part of this, as well as the add-on ecosystem. So this has been a very initial exploratory review of why I think microcates is interesting. I just want to reconnect on exactly why that excites me. So this idea of zero ops or low ops is compelling because there are a bunch of folks in any organization who aren't necessarily Kubernetes experts who want to be given a shell script or a one-liner to get up and running. Imagine if you have a Node.js developer with a Docker file and a Helm chart in that repository. It's hard enough to say to them, well, you've got to join to a cluster, here's your token. In the microcates world, you don't even need to um, provide them with any sort of kube config. You just say, hey, start that up. Now, I hear what you're saying. That's not unique to microcates. But what is unique to it is the fact that you get secure updates that are coming through by a snap D so that they can always be assured that whilst they're on that channel, they are coding against the latest upstream uh, for that particular version. And they're not using something with like ingress version alpha that is no longer supported. Secondarily to that, when they start to want to play with additional add-ons, they've got add-ons that are curated that we know work in the microcates ecosystem. So if I go, you know, microcates enable Istio, microcates enable storage, those are going to bring online components and storage classes will be set up that are going to instantly just work. It's no longer a guess of, oh, if I pull this chart or pull, pin together this CNI out of five different things, will it actually work in my local environment? So that's number two. And then number three is the fact that it's working inside a snap in a constrained environment gives you two outcomes. One of which is you don't have the overhead of running Docker locally. The second one is that you have all your dependencies isolated inside of that snap. So I think that the Microcase project is really interesting from that perspective, not to mention the fact that when they want to try a bit more, you can run LXC uh, and spin up a bunch of containers and then join them in to uh, the, into the control plane and start to play with worker nodes. Not to mention the fact you can also run that cluster across multiple VMs with cloud in it. So there, there's a way of progressing your development journey from a local node, tiny microcates node, and scaling that out. For example, you can have microcates nodes that are on completely different processor architecture, which is really cool. Because when you think about how people are starting to build out Kubernetes clusters in the future, it's not all commodity uh, homogenous architecture anymore. So we're starting to look at more of the nascent and intricate use cases. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Again, the key things about microcates that I really want to emphasize, uh, the ability for the delivery of up-to-date security vulnerabilities um, and fixes, the idea that you've always got the up-to-date API server and controller manager, the idea that you've got a curated set of add-ons and ecosystem, and that the process is isolated within the snap. And we have Kubelite to give us the thinnest yet most authentic experience for Kate's uh, that we can do in a pragmatic way. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Any comments, please do like and subscribe. Uh, I apologize for mincing my words a few times and tripping up. Uh, I obviously need some more coffee. But again, thank you so much for this and see you next time.